uh, right there. He says, I'm going to give you a commandment, a new commandment. You remember that? I said, I, Jesus will give you a, a new command. If you want to, let's you can turn to John. Um, John, the uh, book of John, not the, the uh, gospel of John. And uh, the chapter 13, yes. Yes, so chapter 13. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Ma yeah, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And I'm just... You got your Bibles, please turn there, or iPhones or iPads or whatever you use, it doesn't matter. And look at John chapter 13, and we're going to look at verse 33. Or let's start with 31, just to, real quick. It says, when he was gone, Jesus said, now is the Son of Man glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will glorify the Son in himself and will glorify him at once. All right, that was just saying that Jesus was uh, was, was going to be betrayed, and now God's going to be glorified. Remember, we believe that there's a God, Father, God, Son, and God, Holy Spirit. All three of them are working here. And right here you see that Jesus is going to be glorified so the Father can be glorified. So if Jesus is going to be glorified, what's going to happen to Jesus here in the next few chapters? He's going to be suffering a lot of pain. He's going to be going through a lot of stuff, but he wants to glorify the Father because then the redemption of the whole world is going to happen, correct? And then next verse, Jesus said this. Look at verse 33. He says, My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me and just as I told the Jews. So I tell you now, where I'm going, you cannot come. A new commandment, verse 34, I give you love one another. What were the commandments before this time? It was just all the things of the law, right? They had obeyed all these rules and all these laws. And now Jesus said, listen, this is the main, this, if you can obey this one thing, this is what I want you to remember. Is that you love one another. I'm like, okay, remember last uh, two weeks I said, yeah, I'm, I'm working on that too. I want to love everybody, right? Amen. I even want to love all the Christians. Come on, smile. You know how it is? You go to this church, I go to that church, I'm this way, I'm that way, this culture's this way, this, you know, and we have all these divisions. I'm saying, let's just stop all that, let's just get together, because our citizenship is not here, it's there. My identity is not uh, the United States of America, can I say that? My identity is in Christ Jesus. So I'm here just for a short time. And while I'm here, I'm going to do what Jesus did. I'm going to sacrifice so other people can know him. Amen? And that's what that's the essence of what Jesus was saying. Listen, the most important thing, could you imagine what the world would look like if we actually did love each other? All right. So from that verse, from that passage, we jump into this letter that John wrote. Let's go back to 1 John. And I'm just going to go through the chapter, uh, and I want, we're going to go through chapter 1, and then we're going to go all the way through chapter, uh, part of chapter 2, because I believe the, whoever put chapter 1 and 2 together kind of missed it a little bit, okay, my book, I think chapter 1 goes all the way to verse 6 in chapter 2, it kind of ends that, and so we'll end there today. And let me just read part of this, and then I'm explaining it, I'll read part and I'll explain it, and I just want you to understand that this, this dear children, that verse of that Jesus said, dear children, I new commandment I give unto you, is the same language, the same wording, if you'll see towards the end of today's message, and Jesus, uh, John again writes the same, the only, only scripture is two times is written this way, dear children again. What's happening here? I told you, I think God's doing something in my heart too. Amen? A couple weeks ago, I shared. I said, I think uh, for many years, I, I felt like I was a Peter. You know, get saved. If you don't get saved, you're going to hell and get saved, right? That's the consequences of your sin. I was like really hard. And, and I've been that way for a long time. And if you go through the book of Romans, you kind of connect that way. You know, it tells you all what, what sin is and how you battle against sin and how we should overcome sin. But I think God, what God has done in my heart over the last few weeks and months is that I think he's changing me to be more like John. Why did I say that? Because I think God is continually changing us, right? I mean, my old character, I don't want to be my old self. I want to be something new. And I think God is beginning to do that with me. So in, when I read John, 
And even when you go, John wrote the book of Revelation also. So as you read that, it's kind of a different tone, if you will, in his writing style than Peter and, and even Paul. And I think John was like the disciple sat closest to Jesus. He was like the inner circle. He was really close to Jesus. But I think he was more like, um, like a loving dad. Like a real compassionate, hey, can you, I want to share this truth with you. But I, I know it's going to hurt you, but I want to, I want to share it with you anyway. But would you just receive it in, in God's love? So when he's writing this letter, he's wrapping it in and an understanding of who Jesus is and the love of the Father at the same time. But he gets really to a point because there was some deception going on in the church at this time. And that's why he wrote this letter. It's kind of a letter of instruction. So I want to instruct you today in love. If you were to receive from God the word today, let it change you. Amen? Let's read it. Verse 1. It says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked at, and our, hand, our hands have touched, this we proclaim concerning the word of life. Everybody say the word of life. John, the first chapter of John, the Gospel of John starts with this. In the beginning was the Word. So Jesus, if you know, if you go on at the end of chapter 1 of John, is Jesus. So Jesus is the Word of life here. Amen? So when we want to know what life is all about, we need to know who Jesus is about. Amen? He models so many great things for us to to, uh, to walk in how to be and how to love and how to understand. He didn't freak out over anything. Like last night, you know, we had all these extra people, you know, and Jesus had a crowd of 5,000 following. What did Jesus do? He just prayed over a couple pieces, a couple biscuits and a couple fish and fed 5,000 and had 12 baskets of food left over. Amazing. So we end up feeding people and we're looking for more food, right? We go downstairs and there's a whole other tray of uh, turkey down there. We only had the same amount of turkey we had last year, but we had double the people we fed yesterday. God, you're cool. Amen? We were kind of worried, you know, in our flesh, we were kind of worried, you know. And I said, I kept on telling the people we're serving, the beach was giving the meat, so I was like, just be conservative, little, you know, everybody gets a little bit and it stretched, I don't know how it all stretched, but it stretched. Amen? And it was awesome. So don't, we never panic. Jesus is the word of life. Amen? Verse 2. The, that life appeared, the life appeared, we have seen it and testified of it, and we proclaim to you eternal life. So Jesus gives you the word of eternal life, which, has, which was the Father's and has appeared to us. We proclaim to you which we have seen and heard, so that you also may have fellowship with us, and that our fellowship is with the Father and the Son, uh, His Son, Jesus Christ. We write this to make our joy complete. So Paul, I mean, I'm sorry, John is writing this, again, establishing why he's writing it. He's writing it so we understand who Jesus is. That's all Paul, uh, Paul, John wants to do is, hey, if you want to have eternal life, if you want to have peace, and if you want your joy complete, you need to know Jesus. Right? So it says here, and I, I look, look up, so what does this mean, make our joy complete? It means complete joy. It means joy overflowing. It means like your cup is running over with joy. It's like uh, um, joy unspeakable, full of glories. Uh, there's a song we sing. You know, just let it bubble out of you because in you is if this joy, listen, if this joy flows from us, I think the rest of Scripture comes true when it says, out of your belly, if you will, will flow rivers of living water, which is the Spirit of God flowing out of us, and the joy that flows from you will just kind of, you know, overwhelm the people around you. How about that? How about instead of uh, talking about what's on the TV and all of this, the corruption and all the bad stuff that we see and, and can hear every day, that we can have some joy? Or how about when we're going through some issues in our lives, we, uh, instead of getting all worried uh, and, and freaking out because, hey, I don't know what I'm going to do, then we can just say, well, um, God, would you just give me some of this joy? Why do we sing songs? I was thinking about this. Why do we sing songs at the beginning of our service? So we can get everybody in here in the sanctuary, right? No, we should enter his courts with thanksgiving, right? And into, 
with praise. Right? And thanksgiving. So we come in the house of God with praise and thanksgiving, and then we're going to be worshiping God. So listen, I got on, I come to church just like you do. Well, especially this morning, real tired and poor. Out. But you know, I'm just happy to be here. And I'm glad you guys showed up, you know, because every year we have like this big event and then we have like, I told Richard, I said, we would start church at 1030. It just gets hard to get out of bed, you know, after just giving so much the night before. I get, I understand that. But it's, I'm happy because it was, a lot of lives were touched. Amen. And I don't know what the results of that will be at this time. I don't know how many will come to the kingdom of God. I don't know how many will say, hey, that God that you serve. You know, I don't know, I came to that building, and even though it was really crowded, and there was a lot of kids running around, and it was a little crazy for a few minutes there, there was just a peace over that place. I want, I want that. Amen? I don't know. We won't, we won't know, but I tell you what, God knows. Amen? And God knows. And so I just believe that because of our relationship with Jesus, John is writing, maybe as a father, would we'll be talking to his children. Hey, don't worry. It's all going to be okay. Because we know Jesus. And we can be joyful about that. And matter of fact, we can have complete joy. I don't know what complete joy is. I can stay. I want that. I desire to have complete joy. Hallelujah. How many want complete joy this morning? All right. All right. Does that mean we've got to have a... Never mind. Let's move on. I want to move on. Okay. Uh, now, verse 5 says, This message we have heard from him. Does anybody have a pen? Do you have a pen in, or highlighted in your Bible? Look at all the ifs in this, this, chap, this section right here. Let me read it for you. This is the message we have heard. John, this is the message we heard from him and declared to you, God is light. So the message that John is going to be writing in the next few chapters, I'm going to be teaching every week, uh, chapter 1 to chapter 2 next week. We're going to go on through chapter 5. For the next uh, 5, we're going to preach right out of this chapter. That God is light. So what's the opposite of light? Darkness. What is darkness? All the bad stuff, right? But if in God there's light, there's like all the good stuff. That's the message. And without God we have no hope, but with God we have hope. Without God we have some kind of fun and some kind of joy that we're always seeking for more. But in God our joy is complete. So even in our situations, you know, I was um, thinking of a guy and uh, I was ministering to in the jail. And, you know, he was like the happiest guy I ever met in the whole world, right? Because of Jesus. He had did some stuff in the bad in his past. He became a Christian while he was in jail. And in, while he was in jail, it was going to be a long time before he was going to get out. He had all this joy. He was like the happiest guy there. He knew all the, the guards' names. He knew all the prisoners' names. He knew all their situations. He prayed for all the happiness. It was amazing. His joy was complete. And I think in our circumstances, we can have complete joy. Because we're not, not in darkness. We are in light. We're enlightened to who God is because of Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go on. It says, um, in him there is no darkness at all. If, circle that, if we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live in the truth. What does that mean? I'm talking as a loving father now, right? I'm trying to be like John, so bear with me, all right? I'm working on this is new for me. I'm just gonna, I used to just tell you what all the sins were, and then you had to not do those things, right? I'm not going to do that because the Holy Spirit that's in you as a believer already tells you that kind of stuff, right? So when you obey, and now we'll talk about this in a minute, when you obey that, that Holy Spirit, then you'll walk in light, not in darkness. How many struggle with walking in light? Come on, raise your hand. We all do, right? We all do. Because right next we'll see why. This is, but if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, His Son, purifies us from all sin. So the truth is, when you accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, you are washed with His blood. Do you have no more sin in your life? The desires that you used to have seem to go away and diminish as you get closer to Jesus. But He's not going to force this. I try to tell believers, He's not going to force you to do that. He's not going to make you serve Him. He's not going to say, here's a list of do's and don'ts. I love uh, Tony McEachin's story. I haven't told this in a while. 
Uh, anybody hear my Tony Mikichu story? Uh, besides my family? Tony Mikichu was a, a young Marine. Him and his wife, they, they uh, grandfather willed him a bunch of property up in upstate New York. Now they have a, a camp, a uh, Christian camp there. But Tony was a young Marine who got saved before he went to the uh, Okinawa, Japan. And I was, uh, he, uh, one day, I was, uh, after, between lunch, after lunch, or uh, in between lunch, and uh, I just walked into the, the building, and he was there on phone watch. We always had somebody watching the phone, and as the general call or somebody called, we had somebody answer the phone. He had, he had lunch in the, in the shop, and he was reading his little New Testament, uh, Gideon Bible. You ever see the little Bible, and he's reading it. And I said, hey, I said to him, I said, hey, that's a good book you're reading. And he just lit up and we became friends and I discipled him for a little while. So one time we were going to, uh, on a little little trip to Naha Port, uh, the capital of uh, Okinawa. And we we're just going through the, the uh, shops and the open air malls and we we're just kind of just, just observing and having a good afternoon. Had lunch out there, we're on our way back. On our way back, there was a movie showing at the base theater. And back then it was a dollar to go see a movie. So, um, you know, he said, hey, uh, I want to go see this movie. What do you think? And I was learning. I was studying for right, right then. My first part of my introduction was I started uh, uh, online courses then, or not online, just books. Uh, we didn't have online courses then. But anyway, uh, I was studying uh, the book of uh, John. By, by the way, anyway, uh, he I, he asked me if he should go to this movie. It was a rated R movie. I, I had decided a long time ago I wasn't going to do that. So. Um, I could easily say, don't do that, right? That's a bad thing. And I could give him a list of reasons why. And I said, uh, I said, I don't know, what do you think? He goes, well, I want to go see the movie. I said, well, fine, go see the movie then. He said, is it wrong? I said, listen, Tony. I said, the same God that's in you is in me. I said, so when you walk in the theater, go pay your dollar, walk in the theater. When you get in the theater, I said, ask God if you should be there. If he tells you no, be obedient. If he tells you to stay, then stay and enjoy the movie. I went to my room, you know, was my studies. It wasn't five minutes later. It was not in my door. He goes, this was a, all precious. I could see his face even now. Blue-eyed, you know, Norwegian guy, blonde hair. He says to me, he goes, I opened the door. I knew it was him. Like, I just knew it was him. I opened the door, and he goes, God spoke to me. I said, God spoke to you. He goes, yeah, God spoke to me. I said, what did he say? He said, get out of this theater. I said, okay, awesome, man. High five, good job. You know, listen. But I could have told him what to do, not to do right. And then what would happen if he never had that experience? Because now he learned, I think the same thing for you and me. I can show you that God's going to lead you all truth by his spirit, or I can tell you all these rules. What do you want, a list of rules? Because there's, there's a lot back here. You know, you can find a bunch in the Bible not to do it. Or we can just simply listen to the whole, and that's what John was saying. So he's saying as a father, love, as, as God's love, as much as can, listen, this is what we should do. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light, he is the light, we have fellowship, um, he, uh, he, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus purifies us from all sin. So what's the word purify mean? This is how I read the Bible, I just like got to stop. What, what is all this about? Purified. It's like this is a refining um, fire like gold. You ever see a person uh, heat up gold and get all the, the impurities out and they heat up again and they get the impurities out and until the goldsmith will do that until they actually can see the reflection of himself in the gold. That's what this word means. So Jesus wants to purify us and take out the stuff that's not like him. Come on. So until people look at us and they see Jesus in us. Come on, let's shout. This is good stuff. So we, we are purified, changed, until we look just like Him. Now we can love. Now we can fulfill that commandment because we're like Him. Amen? And that's what Jesus wants us to do. Be like Him. We said this song. Um, Give it, no. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Because what happens when we are purified, when we are like Jesus, then we look at the whole world a whole different way. Life goals begin to change. What I want to do, 
I don't have the desire to do anymore because all I want to do is to be like Jesus. Because when Jesus walked the earth, think about that. Go back. If you haven't read them, go through like Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John again. Make that their goal for, you know, reading through the Bible in 2015. Let's start with the Gospels. Amen? There's a reading chart you can get on U, U version. You can, there's tons of ways to do it. But go through and read how Jesus walked through the, 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 to, through the land and just heal the leper, heal the blind man. You know, they brought a woman to him in, a, in the act of adultery, it says. All the religious folks did this. And said, listen, we should, the law says we should stone her. And it's funny that they brought her, but they didn't bring him. I just don't get that, but they brought her. And Jesus bent down, it says, and he began to write something on the ground. Now, we don't know, but us preachers like to speculate. So I think, this is my version, this is not the Bible, this is just what I think. I think Jesus knelt down, and I think he just began to write the name of all their girlfriends. <laughs> you know? All their sins. And they said to from the oldest to the youngest, they left. And Jesus said to her, she said, where's your accusers? And she's, I don't know. And Jesus says to her, with the, in, in, the, in English, it kind of doesn't really give the full, but he just says to her with compassion and so much love. He says to her, just go and sin. And I think from that moment she was born again. I think her spirit came alive to things of God. And I, the Bible doesn't record anything after that, where she's at or what she did. But I believe from that moment on she lived a life honorable to God. Amen? Because of compassion and love. I love the story of the woman. She just went around doing so many things. And I think the church, you guys, the church, it was nice having the event last night. I loved it. I, I just think it's great. I love the hospital. I love doing that stuff. But I just don't want to have one event a year and say, oh, look at the great things we did for the kingdom of God. I want you guys to like, do it every day. I think the Spirit of God is moving us every day and when we meet people or, or grocery shop or, you know, you don't know who the, the lady checking you out or the young man checking you out. You don't know their life, what's wrong with them or what they're going through. But they just might need a kind word, especially this holiday season, you know. A lot of grumpy people out there got to get those widgets and whatever for Christmas, you know. It's crazy mess, but... Lord, I give myself away so I can be like you in Madison, Wisconsin. Hallelujah. Okay, let's go on. I'm, I'm, I'm rambling, right? Uh -huh. All right. Verse 8. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive, deceive ourselves and the truth is not with us. So why in one part of Scripture says that um, we can be pure and holy, and now it says if we say we're without sin, the truth is not in us because we're we're like we always are going to fight. Leave us listen. We're always going to fight about against our flesh and our own will, right? And we might do or say something that might not be appropriate because God, in the refining process, you know, maybe I don't go out and prowl around and do things like I did when I was a teenager. Thank God for that, right? I mean, um, uh, praise the Lord. But you know, as I grow, God seems to get little things more little little pieces of impurities out of it. You know what I'm saying? And things I never thought was really a sin, he made it real, real to me, things that are now sin in my life. Right? So he says, hey, uh, your little attitude about this, you know, you need to change that. I can't find that actually in Scripture, but what I find is the Spirit of God changing me, purifying me, making me more like Jesus. You know, when I used to get mad, I used to cuss, right? Well, I don't do that anymore. I still get mad, though. Right? Now I'm not saying, like, hey, what are you getting mad about? I don't know if this is bad. Right? We get mad sometimes. We don't know why. You know why men get mad, ladies? You know why men get mad? Because we can't control something. It's our biggest hang-up. Stuff goes wrong or something's out of order, then we get mad because we can't figure it out or can't control it. That's what, it's a trigger. That's the way men are designed. We want to control, we want to make sure things are done right, and when it's not done right, then we kind of 
we get to that yeah. point. Like, come on, guys, we're right now. Right. But when we, when things are running smooth, we're happy. Yeah, we're good, you know, we're controlling stuff, we're making things happen. We're good to go. But as soon as things are not the way we think it should be, then we get mad. So God is God is working at it and Pastor Bob. Amen. So if it's out of order sometimes, 40 more people show up last night, we need to get some tables. Yeah, right. Just we'll get some tables. We'll put another table up, okay. Get some chairs. People ran out, said got chair. Okay, it's okay. Or we can get mad, right? And what happens? And we get angry at somebody and somebody gets offended, and we gotta forgive them, and we gotta go through a lot of process when we, we offend somebody. So let's not get mad, right? So God's working on me, right? Anybody else working on that? Huh? Yeah? Okay, I'm just let's check in. Just check in. We're all real today. You know, be transparent for Jesus. We're working this thing off for the joy that we can, so our joy can be complete. All right, let's go on. Um, it, verse uh, 9, if we confess our sins, praise. That is the key verse for this whole uh, book. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive, for, forgive us of our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Circle the word all. It says, and, and John, now think about this. John was the, the, the disciple that was the closest to Jesus. And then he says here, he writes, he pens this word. It's in the Greek, it's in the Hebrew, it's the same word in English, all. It says all of our unrighteousness. How many? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. So anything the Holy Spirit reveals to you in the purifying process, he's going to forgive you for that. Amen? And I like to tell people that. Like, when the Holy Spirit deals with you with that problem or issue or something, like, talk, like, get rid of it right away. Don't, like, hang on to it. Like, I'm not really mad. I don't really don't get mad. Like, I'm just lying to myself. I'm not really that bad. Well, if the Holy Spirit is dealing with you about it, it's bad. You know what I'm saying? It's not a good thing. He, and the Holy Spirit's responsibility is to lead us to Jesus. Our, the Holy Spirit's responsibility is to teach us truth, and it's also one of the responsibilities of the Holy Spirit is to convict us, the unbeliever and the believer. Why? Because when he convicts us, then we can deal with this. Right? And I try to tell people, listen, when he, the, when he first tells you about it, let's kind of get rid of it, because if you don't get rid of it then, you have to deal with it again. So this week I got mad, and I'm like, okay, all right, I'm fine. Next week, I get mad again about the same issue. Right? And then I get mad again. And it's like, okay, I'm, okay, I'm deal with it. But then I'm not really giving it over to God. I'm not asking for his forgiveness because he's showing me that this is an area in your life he wants to change and fix. Right? So you just go through the process over and over. I mean, am I true? Am I telling the truth here? Yeah, I mean, you got to deal with that same issue. And all of a sudden, here's the same issue. Different people, different day, different circumstances, but the same core issue. The Holy Spirit wants to deal with, take that away from you. And show you that Jesus, through his blood, can cleanse you of that process. Amen? Woo, freedom. Now my joy is complete. Amen? Now I'm happy because now I can go through that situation and I can say, ah, oh, I recognize that. No, nope, I'm not going to get mad. Nope. I'm not going to get, I'm not gonna get sh shook up over that situation because I know the Lord forgave me of that. Amen? We're talking about it in our, in our, our, our uh, Bible study on Monday nights. So we're going to have Bible study tomorrow night too. And we talk about the crown of thorns, how that God through uh, the well, paid the penalty for our mind also. So when we deal with things in our mind, because that's how the enemy attacks you. You know, oh, you're you're not look at you're not a, such a great Christian. Look at you got mad about that. And enemy will be right there to tell you how unworthy and no good you are. Come on. And you got to recognize that. No, in the name of Jesus, you're out of here, buddy. That's why I talk. To no, I'm not going to listen to that. In Jesus' name. Not, my, not by my authority, but the authority that Jesus gave me, it's in his name I pray. Amen? And we can have victory. We really, pray for people to be healed, right? Well, I just pray, like Jesus said, pray. Anything you act in my name, I'll do it for you. So when we pray for somebody, I believe every time I pray for somebody for healing, they're going to get healed. Amen. Right? And when that happens, folks, listen, we give Jesus all the praise. Because not us, but it's just our belief in what he can do. We believe that he's, his word is true. We believe he said he has, we have that authority. And when we pray, it's not us that heals anyway. We're just praying and believing. Who's the healer? Jesus. 
Come on, who paid the penalty for that healing? Just Jesus, right? Jesus did it, so we pray in his name. Well, let's finish this up, all right? Um, if we claim to have not sinned, okay, ver, uh, yeah, let me just read verse 10. If we claim we do not have sin, we make him out to be a liar, and his word has no place in our hearts, so we have to be careful that we know we struggle with that. I was going to uh, share with you with uh, in Romans um, 7, Paul writes it. You know, I, I want to do good, but then I don't do good, and I try to do good, and he goes back and forth. It's a great chapter. If you want to read it, I'm not going to go over it today, but uh, chapter 7 in Romans, it starts with verse 14, it goes all the way through uh, verse 8. And then at the end of his struggle, and he's, he describes this, he's like a lawyer debating, you know, how, how uh, I, I want to do good, but I don't do good. And I try, and, and he's struggling in, in his flesh, and his spirit is warring against each other, but then at the end he goes, only but for Jesus, I have victory over all these things. I say, hallelujah, because if you just read the middle, you're thinking, I'm never going to have victory. People have to read the whole, the whole chapter, because if you just read that one part, you go, man, I'm just going to be struggling all my life, I'm never going to have victory, and I've met Christians like that, you know, woe is me, I just got trouble, I got trouble, I got trouble, yeah, because you didn't read the end of the verse, you didn't even go to the end of the chapter, you just read that, hey, yeah, everybody's going to struggle, but, but for Jesus Christ, I can have victory over all these situations in my life, hallelujah, then my joy can be complete. Because Jesus is in me, and I don't have to walk around going, oh, it's me. You ever meet those Christians? Oh, my goodness. Every problem, every situation. Listen, we have problems. Everybody has problems. Well, you come to this church, we're going to say, let's pray, let's believe, amen, what the Word of God says, because we can be victorious. The Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus, Romans 8. We're, that means we're overcome. That word means we're overcomers of all the junk so we can have joy. Amen? Overcomers of life, overcomers of our flesh, overcomers of our own desires, so we can serve God with complete joy. Hallelujah. Could you imagine going to church and everybody smiling? Happy? Hallelujah. Guess what happened this week? I got cussed at, I got fired, this happened, this happened, but hallelujah, it's all for Jesus. Amen? I remember being in a service, uh, the guys used to make fun of me. Even when I was in Desert Storm, they brought on the uh, um, the side of my vehicle, uh, preacher, uh, man, that's what they, preacher guy or something, or whatever, preacher somebody anyway. It was kind of a mockery, but still, you know, it was kind of like, this is with the guys, you know. And I said, oh, you know, I could have got upset over that, or I could just let it go. And as I let it go, I was able to lead a lot of those guys to Jesus while I was over there. It was amazing. Because, or I could have been offended, been mad. No, I have my joy to be complete. Hey, you recognize who I am. Praise the Lord. They made fun of me. Hey, they made fun of Jesus. They spit in his face. They pulled his beard away from him, his, off his face. They slammed the crown of thorns on his head. They mocked him. They gambled his clothes away. Hung between heaven and earth, naked before the whole world. And still were mocking him. Man, what's a little fun here? Something makes fun here. What is it, what would happen if it was like some of those guys in Syria now and, and all those Christian villages over in Iraq that are, those guys are getting their heads cut off or hanging in the town square naked and on a cross? What would happen then? Would we deny Christ? I don't think so. I don't think so. I think I would, I, whatever, whatever you're going to do, I don't care. Because I know the Lord I serve. Amen. I know who he is. I talk to him every day. I hear his voice. He leads me and guides me. And he does, he does the same thing for you. We can stand in this mess in this very liberal city and say, no, Jesus is the Son of God. Amen. And be light like he wants, he is to the world. He gave us, he deposited in us when we believe his spirit. And that spirit help us have joy complete and to be the light to the world around us. Amen? It's serious. This is life and death. The only, these are words for eternal life. Because without these words, the Bible says there's a judgment coming. I want to be on this side. I want to walk in the light. I don't want to, you know, accomplish all the things that I can accomplish for myself and then miss Jesus. Amen? 
Hallelujah. Look at verse two, uh, chapter 2, verse 1. It says, my dear children. Where do we see the same wording? Only used one other time in the Bible when John wrote it, when Jesus was saying, my dear children. He used the same word. Look it up in the, in the Greek. You'll see it's the same word. I write this to you so that you will not sin. A daddy talking to his children. Think about this now. You are his children. God tells us that. But if anybody does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ. Who speaks to the God the Father for you? It's not the Pope. It's not me. It's not some religious leader. It's Jesus. Sitting at the right hand of the Father. The Bible says, interceding, praying for you to the Father. That's powerful. Jesus is praying for you right now. I pray for you too. So, But this is much greater. Amen? But if anyone does sin, we have one who speaks to the Father in our defense, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the anointing sacrifice for our sins. And not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. So anybody you need, not only forgive your sins, but he forgives the sins of the whole world. We know that we have come to know him if we obey his commands. What is his command? Remember Jesus at the Last Supper? What is his command? Jesus taught in the Gospels. If you love one another, like love one another, and love God with like your whole self. Love each other and love what it says first of all. It said, love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with everything that's in you. Love him and then love each other. And then Jesus repeats that again at the Last Supper. And John here is again saying, listen, obey his command. Love each other. The man who says, I know him, but does not do what his com command is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But if anyone obeys his word, God's love is truly made complete in him. Now again, there's two completes in this section. Joy and love. You can have complete love. We go to Ephesians, and we'll go over, I'm going to too deep right now, but in Ephesians it talks about the same thing. Maturing the saints to have the fullness of Christ. That's what the responsibility of the leadership is. So we can have the fullness of his love, the fullness of his joy, and go out and share that with the world around us. That's why he gives it to us. Not to keep, but to give away. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must walk what? as Jesus did. Amen? Hallelujah. How do we walk as Jesus did? We walk in complete joy, we walk in complete love. And can, that word love is kind of cool because it talks about compassion. It talks about, uh, you know, I, I love Madison. Madison has, uh, uh, um, I mean, whatever you need. If you're poor or you're helpless, you, there's resources in this city. It's amazing. If you need a, a shelter overnight because you something happened, uh, Batters Women's Shelter is an amazing place. They, they help the ladies. They, they just take care of them. It's a wonderful place. Uh, Elizabeth House. There's, there's so many great resources. Second Harvest. There's just so many things here. But if we do all those things and help the poor and don't share the light with them, then I think we're doing a disservice. That's why the church has to be empowered. I want to release you to have complete joy today. I want to release you to walk in God's great love. I want you to I release you to walk in the fullness of Christ Jesus so we can be the light of the world that God wants us to be. Amen? Hallelujah. Would you, just where you're at right now, would you just bow your heads in the presence of God and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal anything in your life, any impurities, anything that's in you that doesn't reflect Christ. Just ask him. I'm not going to ask you to confess it. I'm not going to ask you to say it out loud. None of that kind of stuff. This is between you and God. Father, and being the week of Thanksgiving, you can just say, Father, I'm just thankful 
for what Jesus did for me on that Calvary's cross. That horrific death that he did. That was the punishment that he took. So my joy and my love in you and my compassion can be complete. So Father, you see every heart that's here today. You see everyone that's standing here Sitting here in the sanctuary, God, you know what they're dealing with. Father, I ask for your forgiveness for us. I ask, God, that you just take away all those impurities. The key verse in this is that we confess our faults one another. If we confess our faults, confess them. So let's just ask Jesus, Lord, forgive my anger. Lord, forgive my greediness. Forgive whatever the Holy Spirit's put on your heart to ask for forgiveness. Just ask Him right now. And in that spot, Lord God, where you have removed these sins, God, I pray that you replace them with your joy. Father, I pray you replace them with your love so that can grow in us so we may be the church that you want us to be, Lord God. And Father, I thank you so much for that. Hallelujah. We are new creatures in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. And new things, all things become new in Christ Jesus. So Father, I thank you for that. Change us, God. As in Genesis says, you created us in the, your very image. And Father, I pray that we, we reflect your image to our friends and our family, Lord God, to our co-workers, Lord, to all that we meet. And if for this holiday season, God, I pray our joy will reflect the very love of Jesus so the world will know the true light be set free from darkness. And Father, I pray that over our congregation right now, in Jesus' precious and holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give you praise, Lord God. Let's stand together. Hallelujah. Let's stand together. Let's just worship Him just for a minute, one minute only. Just, just take one minute and just thank Him right now. In your own voice, just thank you, Jesus. Thank you for setting me free. Thank you for changing my life. Change. Help me to love God like you love. Help me to have compassion like you did, Lord, as you walk on this earth. Fully human and fully God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Help us to be just like you, Father. Help us to be just like your son, Jesus. Oh, we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You believe that?